Anyone else this morning? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Who's next? Yes. And, and I just praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyone else? All right. Unless y'all got a song, I'm going to preach a while. Okay. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I want to say I love the Lord this morning. Uh, he has been better to me than I deserve. Uh, I, be honest, I let him down every day. I fall short of his honor. The Bible says we all fall short of the honor and glory of God. Uh, Brother Paul wrote in the Bible uh, that of all the sinners he's ever met, he said, I think I'm the chief of all of them. Sometimes I feel that way. I feel like I mess up more than anybody else. But you know what? No matter how much I mess up or how many times I fall, God has never stopped loving me. God has never stopped being there. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And I'll never fail you. And I'm glad I've got a God that's always there. Amen? Amen. I'm glad that, that when things happen, i got a God that will forgive me. I'm glad that right now, my God is in the forgiving business. Amen? Amen. Uh, and I'm glad that He forgives and doesn't hold a grudge. You know, I've got friends that I'd ask them to forgive me, and they'll forgive me, but they don't forget it. They'll hold on to it. Amen? And later on, they might bring it up again. But God doesn't do that. He washes it in the blood, it's done away with, and God's not going to bring it up again. God will not throw your past in your face. Amen? If somebody keeps throwing your past in your face, all your mistakes you've made and the things that have brought you down, it's not God. It's Satan working to get you down. It's Satan working to discourage you. It is Satan working to drag you down because God does not want His people in the miry pits. The Bible said in Psalms that God has lifted us up out of the miry pit, set us on a rock, established our goings, and put a new song in our mouth, even praise unto our God. God expects us to be lifted up. Now, I know sometimes that's hard to do. Amen? Uh, and, and, and listen, I'm... Now, I understand I've got a, a, a doctorate, amen? But also, you need to understand, I'm about as country as they get. All right? Uh, you can tell that in my speech. You can tell that in the way I act sometimes. And I said that, that's my disclaimer for what I'm fixing to say. I just don't like stupid. Amen? amen. Okay, I, I, you know, I'm sorry. But sometimes you have to deal with it, and sometimes it just gets on your nerves. And sometimes it begins to wear on you. Amen? And it'll wear on that last nerve. And as a Christian, you're trying. I'm really, As a Christian, you're trying to hold that temper. <laughs> Amen? But sometimes I just have to shake my head. I just don't understand. Come on. This is common sense. Com and then I understand. Not everybody has any. Amen. 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 I, I, listen, I'm stating some facts here. I'm not saying anything y'all don't know. There's some people don't have common sense. Amen. And we as Christians have to learn to tolerate. We have to learn to be patient. We have to learn to say, all right, I understand. They can't get it. We had a long discussion yesterday in the fellowship hall 
about my grass getting cut at home. Alright? And they kept saying, you need to get Alex out there and cut your grass. Let your daddy help cut your grass. I said, no. Why? You need some help? Get the help. I said, no. I learned a long time ago, if you don't, you want it done right, do it yourself. They can't cut my grass right. They'll cut it, but they don't get it right. They'll ride around like this and they're cutting up and around. That ain't the way you cut grass. You cut grass this way. So you make lines in the grass. You blow everything one direction so it's vacuumed and cleaned up. That's the way you do it. If you want it done, do it right. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying sometimes you just have to look at them and say, well, I understand they don't know how to do it. I'll do it and just move on. Amen? Sometimes people just don't get it. Amen. All that didn't cost y'all nothing. Amen? I just want you to understand that Christians need to learn to be patient. That's the reason I started out with that song today, Makes Me Love Everybody. We need to be patient with everybody. We need to love everybody. Because not everybody is going to measure up to our standards. See, I've thought a lot about that this week. Not everybody can measure up to the goals you set for you. Not everybody's going to measure up to those standards. And I thought about that because God was telling me, you don't measure up to my standard. God told me, he said, and, and, and folks, he's told you that too because it's in the book. My ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Meaning we will never live up to God's standards. But we need to strive to because the Bible tells us to be perfect. We need to strive to be perfect. We need to set goals that we can reach for and try to obtain. And folks, I, for myself, I set some pretty high standards in my lifetime. And I beat myself up getting there. Because I want to reach it. Amen? You set these goals. But I also want to say this this morning. Listen to me. We have to be careful that we don't beat ourselves up too much. Amen? Sometimes we are our own worst enemy. Sometimes we drag our own selves down and we beat our own selves up and then we can't do what we're supposed to do for God, for the church, or to reach our goals. We need to start loving ourselves. Do you realize? Now you two just got married. You're fixing to get married. Uh, and me and you will work a deal in a minute. Listen. <laughs> the Bible said that a man should love his wife as he loves himself. Because God understands that we're going to love ourselves. We're going to love ourselves so much we're not going to hurt ourselves. Therefore, we should love our wife enough we're not going to hurt her. See, I love me. Amen? You love yourself. Everybody in here loves yourself. Ain't nobody going to go home and punch yourself in the eye and say, I don't like me. Everybody loves yourself. You're going to sit down and eat when you're hungry. You're going to do whatever you need to do to try to make you happy. And so God wants us to do that for somebody else. To love somebody else, you've got to first learn to love yourself. Now, I don't know where all this is coming from. God just feeding it. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to preach you a good message in a minute. But we can't love people till we learn to love ourselves. We can't help people till we learn to help us. You know, the old saying is, charity begins at home. We've got to learn to help us. Listen, I've learned this in some firefighter training. All right, listen. And I ain't trained like you are, so I ain't going there. But I learned this, that Glenn Goins taught me this. That we, they said, no, you learned the wrong thing. Hey, no, no. Go goes okay. When you're going in a building and there's smoke or there, there, there's, there's damage or something going on, you have to walk and your partner got to stay behind you and you just don't, don't go in different directions. One direction, hand on the wall, go, just go to the right, always around the right, hold that wall. Now if I get it wrong, you can tell me. And stay like you're supposed to stay. Because the one thing you got to do is take care of you. Because if something happens to you, you can't rescue somebody else. 
So when you find something, you get in trouble, you back out. If for some reason you can't go in the building, you shut the door, put an X on it, move on. You have to protect you. I cannot help somebody if I ain't living right. Amen. My daughter came to me this past week. She went to the doctor on Monday and the doctor said they found a lump in her breast. And she's going to have to have some more extensive tests done. And she came home and she sat down and she talked to me and she talked to Daddy. And she said, I want y'all to pray for me because I need y'all to do what I can't do. Or I need y'all to do what I won't do. And that's the way she done said it. Because she knows she's not living right. She knows she can't pray and have God answer. But she wanted us to do it. I'm glad I was in a position I could get down and pray and help. That's what I'm saying here. We can't help somebody if we're not living right and doing what we're supposed to. You get yourself down and out in a mess and somebody calls, you've been out drinking all night and they call and say, I need your prayer. You ain't in shape to pray. We can't help somebody if we've gotten in a pickle ourselves, can we? We've got to be in a position to help. I have to stay right 24-7. So when somebody calls and says, can you pray for me? Yes, I can pray. If I can't do nothing else, I can pray. Amen? You call me at 2 in the morning, I'll just roll out of bed in the floor and start praying. I do that anyway. At my age, that's all you can do is roll out in the floor, call somebody to come get you. Amen? Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. We got to keep us safe and keep us where we can help somebody else. Amen? Amen. All right, let's see if I can breeze through this message. Ain't got the five points, amen. Hey, if you got your Bibles, open up to Psalms chapter 30, verse 5. Psalms chapter 30, verse 5. And the Bible says, For his anger endureth but a moment, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen. Uh, the Bible is talking here, the psalmist is talking uh, about the Lord. He said his anger endures but a moment. Uh, in other words, when God would get angry, God didn't stay angry. Uh, uh, this anger did not last long. Uh, and this is part of what we were just talking about uh, in the little introduction there. Listen, uh, uh, he doesn't have a temper like we do uh, uh, where we just hold on to things. Amen. Uh, uh, listen, God's uh, anger only endures uh, but a moment. Uh, uh, but then I have to ask this question. Uh, is that a moment in eternity time or a moment in my time? Amen. Uh, uh, because in eternity time, that could be a long moment. Amen. Uh, down here, a moment's just a, just a twinkling of an eye. Uh, but the Bible said His anger endures but a moment. In His favor. And this is what I like. I don't care about the anger part. In His favor is life. Amen. Uh, uh, God wants to bring life to you and I. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, Jesus said this, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundant. Uh, uh, that doesn't mean uh, uh, that He's going to give us uh, lots of eternal life. Uh, there's only one eternal life. Uh, he's going to give you that life. But when He's talking about abundant life, He's talking about enjoying your life. Amen? Uh, uh, Christians are not supposed to be sad people. Uh, we're not supposed to be down and out all the time. Uh, now, there's nothing wrong with uh, uh, with getting discouraged. Uh, uh, there's no sin in being discouraged. Uh, the sin is staying that way. Uh, because as a Christian, uh, you know how to get on your knees and begin to pray uh, and let your Heavenly Father uh, uh, lift you back up, amen, and encourage you. Uh, we should not stay discouraged, amen. Uh, uh, get out of that uh, and be the child of God uh, you're supposed to be, amen. Enjoy life. We come over here yesterday, we fellowship, we laugh, we cut up, we talk, amen. Uh, we come in here and uh, try to get the service rolling a little bit. And we'll laugh a little bit, be a little uh, jovial with one another, uh, uh, and that's all right. You, you, we'll talk about you calling me fat. That's all right, amen. And we'll laugh about it, okay? I don't mind. Uh, 
Uh, but listen to me. Uh, we need to understand. Uh, Jesus said it this way. All right? Are you listening? Uh, uh, Jesus said, Rejoice not uh, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Uh, you ought to be excited and rejoicing today just for one fact. You're saved by the grace of God and you're not going to hell. Amen. We ought to get excited because we're saved. Uh, uh, then it goes on says, Weeping may endure for a night, uh, uh, but joy cometh in the morning. Uh, uh, we're sad for just a little while, uh, uh, but then uh, uh, joy comes in the morning. Amen? Uh, oh, listen. Uh, and what is that joy? Amen? Uh, oh, listen. When I was a growing up, uh, uh, this is something they taught us uh, uh, in Sunday school. Uh, uh, joy. Uh, uh, Jesus first. Uh, Others second, and yourself last. Amen? Uh, and that spells joy. Jesus, others, yourself. Uh, and if you'll do that in that order, uh, you'll have joy in the morning. Uh, if you'll make Jesus number one, uh, and you'll begin to help others as number two, and worry about yourself last, uh, uh, then you'll have joy uh, down inside. Amen? You'll be able to be like Granny Clampett. I just love that little lady. Amen. And some of y'all so young, y'all don't have a clue. But she used to come in the kitchen singing, Oh, I got joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. Oh, I got joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. Amen. You want that joy? Jesus first. Others second, yourself last. Amen. And what I'm going to preach to you this morning, I've entitled this message, Joys of the Future Life. Because we're continuing our series on the future life. Amen. Uh, and this one is number uh, seven. Amen. The first message was the second coming part one. Y'all remember? Thank you, because I didn't want to start over again. Number two, the second coming, part two. Number three, the judgment. Number four, the judge. Uh, number five, the heavenly home. Number six, the inhabitants of heaven. I like that. That was us. Amen. Uh, and today is the joys of the future life. The joys that lay before us. Amen. Amen. Number one, death will be vanquished. Amen. No more death. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Amen. Uh, Paul is telling the Corinthian church that at the very last enemy of ours that would be destroyed would be death. Uh, in other words, death is going to hang around uh, until God sets up His kingdom in the end uh, and then there'll be no more death. Uh, uh, why? Because death, according uh, uh, to the biblical definition, death means separation from God. Uh, uh, death is not a cessation of life. Uh, uh, you will continue to live forever. You'll live in heaven or you will live in hell. Uh, but you're going to live forever. Amen? Uh, uh, so death means separation from God. Uh, and when it talks about people dying, uh, it's talking about them being eternally separated from God. Uh, uh, because Paul, talking about a Christian, said uh, uh, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Uh, I'll never be separated from God. Amen? Uh, when I leave this world, I'm going straight to Him. Amen? Uh, uh, but death is separation from God. Uh, uh, those that die in their sin, uh, they eternal eternally separated from God and they'll face a second death when they're cast into the lake of fire. Amen. And at that is at the, uh, after the thousand year reign at the great white throne and they will be cast into the lake of fire where they will be eternally separated from God and after that there's no more separation from God. Hallelujah. Amen. So death will be destroyed. No more death. Amen. Isaiah 25, verse 8, He will swallow up death in victory, uh, and the Lord shall wipe away tears uh, from off all their faces. Amen? Uh, 
Oh, listen, huh? he's going to swallow up death in victory. Huh? I'm glad to tell you today, listen to me, huh? if I stop breathing right now huh? and I lay down in this floor, huh? uh, listen, and I don't come back, huh? uh, nobody revives me. A huh? uh, brother comes down here and looks huh? and said, I ain't breathing in his mouth. He's just gone. Amen? Uh, then just let me be gone. Amen? Huh? Uh, it'll be all right. Uh, I've always said, uh, uh, when I'm gone, don't try to revive me. Leave me alone. Amen. Because uh, I've gone to heaven uh, and I don't want to come back here. Amen. Uh, I've put up with enough of this. Uh, and if God's ready for me, I'm ready to go. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to come back and haunt the first one of y'all that goes through my pockets when I've collapsed. Amen. But I know that's what y'all thinking. I'm going to go through his pockets. Y'all little heathens. 1 Corinthians 15, 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Amen. When this mortal has put on immortality, this corruptible has put on incorruption. In other words, listen to me. I got, I, Brother Brim, I don't understand how I got three or four little cuts on my hand yesterday from holding a soft sponge and washing cars, but I got them. The last time I buy them cheap AutoZone sponges, I think it put something in them. But I got little nicks and cuts from washing them cars. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying this body is corruptible. This body has problems, and the older it gets, the more problems it will have. Amen? I thought I'm going to join a gym and work it out so that I can get older, but I'll still be okay. That just don't work either. I told the doctor, I said, I'm going to go to the gym Late in the evening, and I'll go home. He said, no, because you go to the gym in the evening, then you go get all wound up and you can't sleep, and you need to get some sleep at night. You need to go to the gym in the morning. I said, well, that ain't happening. I ain't getting up 5 o'clock and going to the gym. Amen. Amen. It ain't happening. So I'm just going to get up and do what my normal routine is. I eat a pack of donuts and drink some chocolate milk for breakfast, and I go about my day. Amen. Y'all don't look at me funny. I sit in that office and have my donuts this morning, but I didn't have milk. I had Dr. Pepper. Amen. Death is swallowed up in victory. This decaying body will get a brand new glorified body. Amen. I mean, listen to me. Are you listening? Muscles. <laughs> Not fat. Brand new glorified body. One that don't feel aches and pains. One that's... It, listen to me. I've said this one time, preacher. God has built the wall of Jasper in front of heaven. Twelve foundations of jewels. And outside that wall is the biggest junkyard you'll ever find. You know why? Because there ain't no eyeglasses going in the gate. You leave them outside. There ain't no dentures going in the gate. You leave them outside. There ain't no prosthetic arms and legs out, they all stay outside because you get a brand new glorified body. Amen. Can you imagine the junkyard outside of heaven, amen? Because none of that goes to heaven with us. Amen? amen. My son is a type 1 diabetic. He has to take insulin every day. He walks through the gate and all them little needles and things stay outside. 
all them little things he has to use to check his sugar after he eats and when he gets up, all that's gone. You don't have to have that stuff anymore. Brand new body is perfect. Amen? Right, man. You'll like me better then. Brand new body. Muscle. Amen! Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 10, but it is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. He will abolish death. Amen? Number two, the saints will be glorified. Now, a lot of times we don't understand what glorified means. Okay? In our minds, we think glorified means it's just real bright. That's not what glorified is. Glorified is like... Now, here's Brother Brent. I like picking on Brother Brent. Amen. Here's Brother Brent. Bless his heart. He grew up in Indiana. And he's a Notre Dame fan. But we don't hold that against him. He went to elementary school. He went to high school. He went to college. College. Let's all say that. College. College. Try to get it in some, get it. Some of these folks need it. Glorified means to go the extra. Glorified means you worship a person and you honor them because they graduated high school. But if they go to college and go to that next step, it's more honor. It's more glory. And that's what glorified is. It's the extra. And as God and Jesus Jesus comes back, He is glorified. He gets the extra recognition. He gets the extra praise. He gets the extra worship. He gets the extra honor. That's what being glorified is. You honor Him more than you honor somebody else. For Jesus to be glorified means you need to honor Him more than you honor me. You want to love me and I appreciate it. But I, from the bottom of my heart, you honor me by giving me things. But what I want to know is do you honor Jesus more by giving Him even more? And I'm not talking about cash. I'm talking about more of yourself. To glorify God is to give more of yourself to Him. To lift Him up. To praise Him. Because He's the one that has given you everything you've got. You don't have your money. You don't work and get your money. God gave you the job, the ability to do it, and it's God's money. And God can take it away at any time. So it's not your money. But we like to think, oh, it's my money. I earned it. No. Because God could take that away from you any time, in any way, form or fashion. I live in a modular home over there. And one of those videos I was watching about the flood, there was a mobile home. And it wasn't just slow. It was moving being washed away. And I was looking at that, and I was thinking, okay, the, my mind, the people evacuated, and the homes being washed away, everybody was safe. But all of their belongings are gone. Okay? Why are you saying that, preacher? Because I want you to understand, everything you got could be taken away at an instant. Well, I don't know about that. Well, I'm going to give you Bible for it. Job chapter 1. Job was the richest man in the world at that time when he was alive. He had ten grown children. And the Bible said in one day, all in eight hours time, he lost every dime he had. Completely broke from the richest man in the world to the poorest man in the world and was living in the dump because he lost his house. And a man come running up and told him, said, all ten of your children have just died. Everything you have can be taken away in a moment. Gone. So don't think it's all yours. 
Praise God for what you've got and thank God. Don't take it for granted. Amen? Amen. Well, we ain't going to have no flood. You don't have to have a flood. Have a car wreck. You lose a loved one. A lot of things can happen, folks. But the Bible also says this about Job. Because I want you to understand, we're talking about joy this morning. He said, The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And he bowed down and he worshipped God after losing everything. He still loved God. He didn't blame God. That's our problem. When things go bad, we want to blame God. We don't want to take accountability for ourselves and what we've done. A lot of times you're in the mess you're in because of your decision and what you've done. Amen? But the saints get to be glorified. Matthew thirteen forty three. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Luke chapter uh, 9, verse 30 and 31. And behold, there taught with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, uh, uh, who appeared in glory and spake of his decrease, uh, which should come. Romans eight seventeen. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, uh, that we may also be glorified together. In other words, we will get our honor when we get to glory. Because Jesus said this, He said, when they begin to separate, and God tells them to come in, He will say, you have been faithful over a few things, I will make you ruler over many. Enter in to the joys of the Lord. Okay? We will get honor and glory. We will be glorified also. Why? Not the Jews. Because we will have rule over them. Amen. And y'all get more of that when we get it more into Revelation. Amen? Number three, the glory will be endless. Romans 8, 18, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. It's endless. 2 Corinthians 4, 17, For, mm, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. How many of y'all are going through a light affliction? Me neither. How many of y'all are going through a rough affliction? <laughs> Amen. Paul told the Corinthian church, he said, for our light affliction is but a moment. And when Paul wrote this, Paul is sitting between two guards chained up in a dungeon and his eyesight is failing. And he says it's a light affliction. He said whatever we go through down here is a light affliction. And you know why it's light? Because we don't have to go to hell. That would be a heavy affliction. If you walk in through your problem with God, then God will carry you through that thing. God will get you through it. Amen? Amen. But you need to walk through it with God. So many times we start through this thing and we think, I got it on my own. Folks, if I could tell y'all how many times, if I could tell them that I've tried to weather the storm and handle the problem on my own, I could be rich. Amen. But I've learned it ain't me, it's God. I need God to get through it. I need Him to strengthen me. It's Him that I say, Lord, I need some more, here's a big word, fortitude. I need some more resilience. I need some strength. I need some encouragement. You can rest. I just need somebody to hug my neck. Would you hug my neck? Yes, I will. Love you. Because sometimes, don't take it the wrong way, it's them old saints that can make you feel the best. 
because they've been through things we ain't been through yet. And they it, they don't have to do nothing great. Just put an arm around you and hug you and say, I love you. Have you tried that lately? Just to tell somebody, I love you. I'm here for you. We got this. I, I'll, I'll, I can't do nothing, but I'll walk through it with you. Amen? I'll walk through it with you. Our light affliction, which is a moment, worketh in us an exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Amen. These things will come to an end, and at the end will be the better. Second Timothy 2 and 10, Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Amen. I endure all things. Paul said, I'm enduring all of these things for y'all's sake. That y'all can see, if I can do it, you can do it. If I can sit here in this dungeon and be chained and bound up and still try to get the word out, you can do it. Amen. And we're going to stop right there this morning. If y'all would, get us a verse of song. I ask you if you would, please, rise to your feet this morning. Listen, I'm trying to let you know there are joys in the future life. There are good things waiting us. Death will be vanquished. The saints will be glorified. And the glory will be endless. Because this affliction and these storms that we are going through now, they are temporary. They're not going to last. That hurricane went through rather quickly. Now it dumped a lot of water. And it's made a mess. But it's, listen to, there's still not a hurricane. It gone. It's left. Okay? It rained here and it left. The trials are happening, but they'll stop. The battle is raging, but it'll end. We'll have victory. All of these things are temporary. Everything in this world is temporary. I'm working for the eternal. I'm working for what God is preparing for me. The Bible said we're going to a city whose builder and maker is God. God made the city. And then Jesus said, I'm going to prepare you a place. He's building mansions in the city. And we're going that way. That's what I'm working for. I'm not working for the temporary. I'm working for the eternal. I'm laying up my treasure in heaven. And my heart is in heaven today. Amen. I'm going to tell you my stupidity. And we're going to close. I walked in the living room the other day. And I stood there. And I got a wall. My walls are about this color, except one little wall. And that one little wall, I have painted that color. And I got a big picture of Mama. And I got a little shelf. And on that shelf is a little number one ceramic thing she got from Mount Calvary. And there's a little plaque that's got the Lord is my shepherd because that's her favorite verse. And there's a little bitty about that big around, purple tambourine sitting there because mama used to play the ta- she used to sit right there and play the tambourine during church every Sunday and I got those things sitting there and I stopped and I looked up I just talked to mama for a little while because I love my mom I miss my mom and I just talked to mama and you can think I'm stupid if you want to I, I don't care because I love my mom and I miss her amen and, and and I do that sometimes. I talk to mom. Right? Where my heart is, it's where my treasure is. Where my treasure is, where my heart is. My mama is my treasure. My heart's in heaven with my mama. Amen? Part of it is. Part of it's with y'all, because I love y'all. Amen? But Mama's my treasure. I still go down to my daughter's grave and I talk to her.
my aunt is buried next to my daughter. And when they dug the grave out, you could see my daughter's vault and all because they dug it right next to it. And it's the first time in 40 years that I've laid eyes on that thing. Boy, you're talking about memories. To be able to look at that vault and know the casket and her body was right there and I could reach in and touch. I can't wait till I get to heaven and pick her up and hold her. One more time, kiss her on the cheek. Say, Daddy made it. I'm here, baby. Amen. Amen. Mama's probably running around with her now. <laughs> I'm going to get there. Amen. I'm going to get there. The joy that waits us in heaven. Is that joy waiting on you in heaven? Can you stand here today and say, I don't know, preacher. Well, guess what? This altar is open for you to make sure that you have that eternal joy in your heart, that you have treasure in heaven, and you'll be able to see it and hold it one day. While we see